resonances are all around us. When you drive your car, you may have noticed that all of a sudden you hear some crazy rattle somewhere. It could be your mirror, it could be something else, it could be an ashtray. Because you're driving it and you're exciting it with the frequency with which the wheels go around, and you may hit a resonant frequency. You go a little slower and the rattle stops, but something else may start to rattle. The reason why the first rattle stopped, because you go off resonance. But you may go on resonance of another object. All objects that you have in your room have preferred resonance frequencies. Whether they are the pots or the pans or whether it is your refrigerator, anything you can think of, everything has resonance frequencies. Your body has resonance frequencies. If I took you in my hands and I would start to shake you, then if I do it at low frequency, not much would happen, but there would be one frequency that your arms begin to move like this, like they are physical pendulums, right? And if I hit that frequency, then indeed there would be a strong response. And so your body has many resonant frequencies, your arms, your legs, your head, everything. We also experience, all of us, emotional resonances. A small input, a huge output. Falling in love is an emotional resonance. If someone touches a sensitive nerve, that is a resonance. Someone could say something to you, and it could be a very sensitive issue for you, and you go non-linear. Your response is unbelievably strong. That, in my view, is also a form of a emotional resonance. I have here two tuning forks, and these tuning forks are designed in such a way that all I would have to do is just bang them and they will pick out their own resonance frequencies. The tuning fork is very simple, like this. I give it a kick, and the kick is like dumping a whole spectrum of frequencies on it, and it picks out the ones that it likes, which is this one. And that's the one in which it will resonate. It's possible that I can excite it at higher frequencies, at higher harmonics, but that's a little hard even with a tuning fork. So this one is 256 hertz. So the prongs move 256 times per second, and this one is 440 hertz. And you hear no overtones, you don't hear higher harmonics. If I take something as simple as a wine glass like this, it has many, many normal mode frequencies, many resonance frequencies. The lowest one is very easy to excite, and I will do that. I will rub it with my finger. Rubbing is like striking a string with a bow. It's all the same. I expose it to lots of frequencies, it ignores them all, it picks out the one that it likes, the resonance frequency, the normal mode, the natural frequency. And what the glass will do in its lowest harmonic, in its first harmonic, it will sort of oscillate like this. And I will show that to you later in this lecture in slow motion. But let me first make you listen to the, the frequency. It's around 430, 70 hertz. I have to wash my hands because I have chalk on my fingers. And because of the chalk, I will not be able to excite it. I have to really rub it with some liquid, and therefore my hands have to be chalk-free. Chalk is just too greasy. Let me try. Very clear. I remember when I was a student, we had after-dinner speakers. If we got bored, we would all do this. Let me tell you, that makes a lot of noise. So again, I'm not exciting it with the 470 hertz. I'm dumping a whole frequency, a whole spectrum of frequencies on it, and it picks out the one that it likes, which in this case is the 470 hertz. Resonances can be destructive, and rumor has it that there are singers, women who take a, a wine glass, and they do exactly what I did. They do this. They listen carefully. They generate that frequency with their voice, they increase the volume of the voice, and then the rumor has it that, bang, the glass goes. In other words, the amplitude of the glass becomes so large that you get so high, so close to resonance, and so much power goes into it because of the volume of the voice that the glass breaks. I'm going to try to break a glass with you, and you'll see that it is not easy. I have here a wine glass. It's almost the same as the one I have here, there. And we can illuminate that glass with a strobe light, which you see here. And I'm going to show you there the display 
of that strobe light. And the reason why we strobe it is that we want you to see, as we excite the exact frequency of the glass, we want you to see the motion of the glass. And the way we can make you see the motion is by strobing it not exactly at the frequency of the sound, but a little bit different frequency. So you will see the stroboscopic motion then of the glass. So I can already, I will make it darker shortly, but I want you to see at least most of this. I can generate then the 470 hertz, which is very close to the resonance frequency. This is the tone that we will use. We will increase the volume and then we will try to hit that resonance just right. We may be off by a few hertz. We have to be right on within a hertz and then we'll see where we can make the glass break. Now I want to warn you, the sound is going to be very strong. So you may, as the time goes on, as we go to higher volume, you may want to turn, you may want to close your ears. In fact, I will use this to protect my ears and I will even use this to protect my eyes in case the glass might break which I doubt whether it will, but who knows. All right, so let's make it very dark. So you see here the glass. It's not doing very much. And I'm now going to increase the volume of the sound. I'm going to cover my ears now. You already begin to see some motion. I'm not sure that I am on resonance. Increase the volume. Now changing the frequency. Getting very close. Getting very close. There it goes. I mentioned that resonances can be very destructive, and there are some striking examples in history. In fact, you may have 